Is defibrillation with hands on the pads really safe for a clinician? Or maybe it's a stupid idea and we should not be doing that. Let's deliver a shock to this piece of pork and find out. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. The idea to apply manual pressure during defibrillation is nothing new. Back in the days when dinosaurs ruled the earth and we were using paddles to deliver a shock, you had to apply a pressure. Otherwise, there was a huge risk of an electric arch. This changed when modern adhesive pads were introduced. Once applied, they're supposed to stay on the chest and at least, in theory, no one should be touching them during the defibrillation. It is unclear who was the first person to develop the technique called manual pressure augmentation. However, all clues point to Dr. Alexander Voskobojnik and his study from 2019, where he described different methods of cardioversion of obese patients and pointed out that actually adding pressure to pads changes transthoracic impedance, subsequently increasing so-called first shock success. And why are we so focused on this first shock success? Because every defibrillation is an electric shock, which sure can be life-saving, but equally might cause damage to the whole body. Do you know how many percent of the total current applied during defibrillation flows actually through the myocardium? Four. Four percent goes to the heart. 82% are shunted off by the skeletal muscle layer, and 14% goes to the lungs, where some damage occurs on the cellular level. That's why we want to be successful on the first time, because every subsequent shock just creates more damage to the body. You will find out more reading this and this and this study. Anyway, when other researchers found out about manual pressure augmentation, they quickly exported this idea from cardioversion to defibrillation, and bosh, here we are. We have this and this study, where authors associate ROSC with using hands on the pads. There is finally this study, where um, authors explored potential risks associated with manual pressure augmentation. The outcome was positive, and some ambulance services across the world decided to trial this technique. So far, we had about one case where a paramedic was thrown across the room whilst having hands on the pads, and that occurred in Australia. We don't know much of the, the test, but according to the Union representative of Ambulance Victoria, till this adverse incident, manual pressure augmentation was used on 120 patients, equivalent of 600 defibrillations, and then the trial was stopped. One adverse incident in 600 shocks. Is that many or not? I will leave numbers for your consideration. This way or another, I decided to check if manual pressure augmentation is actually so risky. In order to do that, I will recreate an experiment that was undertook a year ago by Dr. Andrew Stevens. But I'm going to do something more. I will connect myself to the monitor to see if using manual pressure augmentation affects clinicians' ECG. Because potential transmission of the current is one of arguments against this technique. By doing this, I'm not encouraging or discouraging you from using MPA technique. All I want to do is to critically review literature and explore some evidence around this topic. By all means, always follow your local protocols. Dr. Voskobojnik describes two ways of putting hands on the pads. You can either use heel of the palm or clenched fists. I have huge problem with both options. In the first case, you can easily <coughs> touch the patient with your fingers, and in the second one, as the pressure is applied to the uh, center of the electrode, the <coughs> edges can slightly peel off, which may contribute to so-called electric arch. And yes, I know that the risk in both cases is minimal, and the use of gloves significantly increases safety, but I'm still not entirely sure if I can recommend any of the scrap techniques. After a moment of hesitation, I'm choosing to use my fist protected by the neutral gloves. Shock delivered. I didn't feel anything, and let's see, my own ECG was not affected at all. Now let's try the same, but with wet hands and no PPE. Again, all good. For more interesting hints regarding defibrillation safety, especially defibrillation on wet and metal surface, watch my video where I defibrillated chicken, recreating another famous experiment. My name is Alex Hepner, and this was Group Call.